Hi subscribers, developers and friends. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into the tool every Java Spring developer should know about. Spring Boot Admin Server. Whether you are uh, new to microservices or you are experienced developer, this tool is a game changer when it comes to managing and monitoring your Spring Boot applications. So stay tuned because in this video I will walk you to the benefits, quick demo and some pro tips to get most of it. All the links will be in the description of this video. Imagine being able to see all your Spring Boot applications in one place, monitor their health, track logs, uh, change log level, change environment variable and even restart the services without ever touching the command line. That's exactly what Spring Boot Admin Server offers you monitoring and managing your app in real time through a sleek and intuitive dashboard. So why you should care about Spring Boot Admin Server? Let's talk advantages first. First one would be centralized monitoring. It's one stop shop for managing multiple Spring Boot applications. You can visualize their health status metrics and even see if a service goes down. Second one, I would say it's easy integration. It integrates seamlessly with your Spring Boot applications with a few annotations like enable admin server and a client library plus some config you are up and running. Third, I would say it's a real time alerts. You can set up notifications when your services become unhealthy. This makes a perfect for production environments when you want a quick feedback. Fourth is detailed metrics and logs. So you can check your detailed max metrics like uh, memory consumption, CPU, actually threads and so on. And even you can dig into the logs without SSH your server. Fifth is a remote control. You can restart your services, clear caches, change environment variables, change login level on the fly. So which is saving a lot of time and making management a breeze. Six security features. It has a built-in authentication with Spring Security and Access Control, so you can ensure that only authorized users are making the changes. All right, enough of the talk, and let's jump into demo and see Spring Boot Admin in action. So, usually you would start with the Spring Initializer, uh, generating the application stops and libraries and whatsoever. So. I skipped this part. I already have a project created for you in my GitHub repository links in the description. Let's start with the first thing which we need is a Spring Boot Admin Server. And what does it mean is we need to bring some dependencies here. And the most important is basically Spring Boot Admin Server, <laughs> which is for from CodeCentric uh, with some particular version. And that's a must for the server. The second most important thing in this is to configure annotation, just saying that we want to enable admin server. And that's it for the start. Yeah? You can do some customizations and so on. We will see later on. So we have a Spring admin server. We can, we can run it. So let's run the admin server. So now the admin server is up. We can go to the browser. And inside the browser you should see something like that and it says no application registered it's because we didn't start it yet the clients but that was the first step starting the admin server second step is you have your clients or microservices or whatever you call it and in general to connect to the admin server you need either some client library or use some other mechanism to talk with the admin server which could be a service discovery you can check the documentation but i chosen the easiest way which is a client library what does it mean is that you need spring boot admin server client ideally with the same version which you had for the server and this usually is not enough you as well need to configure something in your resources so that the Spring Boot Admin Client knows to which server it connects. 
So here you have Spring Boot Admin Client URL. Yeah, this needs to match with your server. In normal environment, this is enough. If you have some proxy or whatever Kubernetes setup, you then need to override that, check the documentation. But usually that should be enough. So let's start the first microservice. First microservice is just a simple REST hello controller, which is not doing much, just returning hello. And it has some scheduler and so on. But let's start this first. So the microservice did start and what you should see if the reg registration of the client was successful to the server, something like that. If there is an error, that it will be something like couldn't connect or couldn't register, whatever. And you will not see it in the admin server, but we were lucky. It started, it registered. And if we go to the Spring Boot Admin UI, you see our microservices up and running. And if you go to Wallboard, you can see all the details which are there for this microservice like health, metrics, environments, beans, and so on and so on, logging. You see, everything is ready and working. I also created some other examples where micro microservice 2 is as well having a database, yeah, so it means not just hello controller, but it this is also having integration with the Postgres database and repository and stuff like that, just to show you the advantages of using this tool. So let's start microservice 2 again. As I said, it's using flyway database and so on. The start of the second microservice could be a bit delayed because it's also starting the Postgres, uh, Postgres database and it's applying a migration here. Yeah. So let's go then to the admin. Again, to the applications, we see we have like two of them. Let's go to the well board and to the second one. And the difference which you can notice is you have, for example, the data here, which means data means that it's connected with uh, mm, the flyway and you can see what was applied on the beginning, on the startup of the application. And the third microservice is, again, a simple hello controller, but this should demonstrate a refresh scope, which I will talk later on. But basically it means you can change the environment variable on the fly. And for that, you need to have support with the you need to use the support with the refresh scope variable. Let's do a demo. So let's start the microservice tree. You see microservice tree is as well discovered. Let's check our environment variables. Yeah, there are plenty of them. So let's jump back to the code. So we have simple REST controller. The port of our application is 8081. And just by calling this controller, it should return greeting message, which is defined in the property file. Yeah, hello developer. Let's try it. Okay. So hello developer on the first try. And let's change the environment variable. So you would go to environment manager and type in greeting message. You can change it to whatever. Yeah. Let's update this, confirm, and let's refresh the scope. When we refresh it and go back, you should see something like this. Like the Refresh endpoint was called. Yeah? Of course, this endpoint needs to be enabled. Now let's try again the endpoint. Yeah? Voila, it worked. So that was just a simple demo. Yeah? Mm, it has some more properties and, and stuff to explore. Of course, check the documentation and other things. Check the repo. I hope to, you liked it. And let's continue with the pro tips. So you have seen the basics. Here are some useful tips to make the most of the Spring Boot Admin Server. Use custom notifications. 
It means you can set up notifications in Slack, email, or webhooks on art. And this is super useful. This is super useful in production environments when something goes wrong. So in my example, I was using email. If we check the application properties for Spring Boot Admin Server, you will see that there is an integration with the Spring email. I was using Gmail just for the demonstration purposes. And the most important part is here, Spring Boot Admin Notify Mail. This means that when something happens, the email will be sent to my email address. And I will add an example how it looks like. But you can use other integration channels to check the documentation. Another important thing which I don't have in my uh, example project is that you won't you would not expose this in in this way. You would secure how client communicates with the server. You would secure the access to the Spring Boot admin. So for that, you use the Spring Boot security project under the hood, and you would define define some roles or permissions for users which they can access, like all, all <laughs> read-only endpoints, and then uh, secure whatever you like for the uh, for the management endpoints. You as well mm, need to think if you want to expose uh, the environment values, you know, like everything, or just when when those uh, users are authorized, because some in, in in some systems you can then expose the passwords or, or secret stuff which you don't want. Yeah, so be careful by switching the values here. Tip number three, what you can do is to customize. Customize how the UI looks. This UI is already customized. You see that there is a different name, different title, and you can customize some things, uh, maybe adding to your brand. And so in the server part, I just said customize the UI title and the brand just by adding some you know additional text. You can change the the icon, whatever you like, yeah, and maybe change the palette or color. Up to you. Then you can do some custom metrics. Yeah. Those ones which are here are currently, you know, either system ones or the ones which are coming from some library. And because under the hood it's an endpoint from the actuator, you can create your custom metrics and publish it to the actuator. And then the Spring Boot Admin server will show it. Nice. Okay, for the changing environment variables, as I already showed or demonstrated, it's something like a feature flag. <laughs> if you like, there are better tools, maybe like Unleash, but if you don't have anything and you need to change it on the fly, that's as well a good alternative. Normally, the environment variables are loaded once on the startup. To make this work, you need to use refresh scope annotation, uh, Obviously, you also need to expose the endpoint, which needs to be called on the refresh. So be careful with that, yeah, because um, you need to design your application so it works with these uh, refreshable environment variables. I would use it only in cases when you know what you are doing. Okay, and maybe at the end we already have three microservices. What does it mean for us? So there needs to be some communications between the clients and the servers. Be mindful uh, what what actuator endpoints you enable. Maybe you don't need all of them. You know, maybe we just want to use few of them. Maybe also change the interval. Change the interval. Uh, here I'm just showing the environment very uh, the properties which you can use to fine tune. Uh, how the Spring Boot Admin Server and clients are communicating, you know, because this means a lot of tra traffic uh, between your applications. It also can cause a high CPU load, and if you're on a slow network, um, maybe it's worth to change the default value because you can end up in the you know <laughs> very slow responsive microservices or or the UI of Spring Boot Admin would be very slow, CPU throttling, and so on and so on. So just be mindful of what you are changing and how many microservices you have. That's all, folks. I hope you 
found this video helpful and I encourage you to try it out on your projects. It's a very nice tool to help you stay on the top of your Spring Boot applications, especially in production environments. Try it out and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.